Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kryptonized. Amanda and I are very, I'd say, happy to announce uh, we've got Barnaby Anderson on the show. Barnaby and I go way, way, way back to Davos, actually, is where we first met. I don't even remember how we met. But since then, we've de developed a, a mutual appreciation of one another, uh, probably me appreciating him way more than he appreciates me. <laughs> uh, Barnaby's kind of a world traveler. Um, I think that uh, that goes with his Australian accent. And uh, today we are going to talk about Wonderland. And, um, you know, I think for Amanda and I, I've got a pretty good appreciation of, of Wonderland, but you know, I like uh, first of all for you to kind of give your background on, on what you've you've done in the past, what you're doing today, and then uh, let's let's dive into Wonderland and, and maybe a few things like rebasing and and how this whole DeFi uh, phenomenon got started. For sure. Well, thanks for having me, Mark and Amen. It's great to be here. And yeah, um, me and Mark met years ago over at Davos in January 2018, actually. And uh, so my background is in is in tech for like nigh on 28 years, something like that. All that time focused on e-commerce. So I was building websites literally when there was Netscape just with a gray background back in 95. So I've just been obsessed with all things tech and the reinvention of commerce as we know it, which naturally led me into blockchain. I started looking at Bitcoin in 2011, but yes, I did not understand it. I thought I was too techy. I didn't get the economics of it. So there I was just going, oh, this is so cool. And I just thought it was a cool payment mechanism. I mean, which it is, but it's way more than that. And so eventually um, by 2016, I realized, hang on, no, 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 this is the only game in town. So I put all my effort into that, which naturally led my curiosity down the rabbit hole, of not just Bitcoin, but then Ethereum, which led into ultimately programming money, which led into DeFi. And so I've been basically obsessed with DeFi since about 2018, not long after I, I met Mark. And so I literally started playing in some of the very rudimentary early DeFi platforms, which weren't even called DeFi back then. And essentially, uh, that grew uh, where people started playing around with um, with liquidity pools and staking. And that was kind of what we would call and farming. We'd call that sort of the original DeFi. So now it's kind of like DeFi 1, 1.0, because now we have this DeFi 2.0, which is where we're going to get to, which came out uh, in, in 2021. So basically from April of this year, we had this new innovation around liquidity pools. So that's really what that is at the heart of what Mark said to me asking me about, because the precursor to that was essentially Uniswap and various other, and that's obviously a DEX, a decentralized um, exchange where anybody could swap tokens. But then that also led into this uh, whole ability to farm tokens where platforms would just basically give you tokens for farming where you're staking one token and getting another one for free. But then all the whales and everybody piled in and they would just get those tokens and sell them and pump and dumps, et cetera. So where are we at now and how could anything be anything different? Mark, what do you think? Well, I, you know, my biggest thing is how did we get here? I mean, uh, my knowledge of, you know, crypto is is pretty deep, but my God, when you started getting into this DeFi stuff and rebasing, I'm like, oh, I got to go back to school again. Uh, I don't know if you ever leave school in crypto, but maybe you can give us the thumbnail sketch of how we got to Wonderland, um, you know, from the beginning real quickly. So, well, essentially it comes out from, uh, from Olympus. Olympus DAO is the precursor to Wonderland. Olympus DAO came out in April. And so uh, there April is- April 2021, by the 2021. way. 2021. We're, we're in December 2021 right new. now. This is very new. It's very new. So there were some other innovations that we don't necessarily have to touch upon because everything is speculative about what happened in 2019 and 2020 that led us to Olympus DAO. But there were some other innovations um, around around staking and basically sort of certificate of deposits that were um, now on platforms that were decentralized, fully decentralized. And there were some big innovations around that. So that went on for about 18 months or so before Olympus DAO came out. And so essentially Olympus DAO was the precursor to Wonderland and they invented this, this model of platform owned liquidity. So what would happen, uh, unlike on Uniswap, where essentially, you know, we are joining liquidity pools for a pair, let's say between Ethereum and, uh, and USDC or, or whatever, these two to tokens, and we would add our tokens into those, that liquidity pair and we would earn a small amount from the transactions. But the but Uniswap, they don't have any of those tokens. We are the ones contributing them on either side of the swap. So what would happen 
if the platform, if we all gave the tokens to the platform, nobody ever done that before. I don't know. Um, and, and obviously, um, well, basically what happens, Zeus, this guy Zeus, who we don't, we don't know who he is, but he's a semi-anonymous. He does do interviews. And he was the guy who apparently thought of this innovation around platform-owned liquidity, which he pioneered with Olympus Dow. And then that went on for, let's say, about six months, kind of under the radar. It still grew and grew to like a billion, a, bi a market, market cap of about a billion dollars. But then this guy, Daniel, this, this Italian, Daniel, he noticed all of this and he thought, what if we took Olympus Dow and put it on Avalanche, where every transaction is just one cent? We're going to basically fork it. That, that's, um, you know, tech terms for copy and paste. We're going to copy and paste the code from Olympus Dow and put it on Avalanche. Because over Olympus Dow, by then every well, transaction... Second, how, how can you take one, even if it's cut, cut and paste, how would you take one program and put it on a completely different chain? How does does it, does it just fit automatically, or because it's all yeah. based on Ethereum, it just works? Yeah, it's called EVM, Ethereum Virtual Machine. So by then, Ethereum obviously every transaction was twenty to twenty bucks to hundred bucks a pop every time you're in and out. Yeah. And so, and at the beginning of 2021, it wasn't like that because Ethereum was low cost. It was like two or three hundred bucks per Ethereum. So that meant every transaction was two or three dollars. Suddenly, as Ethereum grew. Now it's like 50 bucks a pop. And so um, everybody was kind of getting antsy. They were like getting a bit annoyed with these amazing platforms, but now it was so expensive. And so um, Danielle, this, this Italian guy, he was right in assuming that what if we forked the code, we went into uh, like Etherscan, because that's the cool thing about this. It really is DeFi. The code is just available for any one of us to go and check. You can just literally go in there uh, under contract, because these are called smart contracts on, a, on Etherscan, you go in there, you just copy the code out and just look at it. And if you if you had to read code or you hire somebody to read code, they'll tell you uh, all the ins and outs. And is there, a, is there an issue? Is there a potential bug in the code? And, and so he and his team, Daniel's team, they, they forked it, copy and pasted it and put it on Avalanche, which is a new blockchain that is competing directly with Ethereum. And there are many of these now and they are called EVM compliant, Ethereum virtual machine, which means that basically any smart contract that works on Ethereum, it's going to work on these ones, and that uh, that includes uh, you know, but Avalanche is right out in front. Um, you know, uh, Pol Polygon, which is Matic, uh, which is actually like a layer, uh, like a side chain. It gets very techy. Let's just stick with Avalanche because it's growing <laughs> rapidly, and and every all these smart contracts work on that. So Wonderland was the reinvention of the same code base, which meant that if you liked and trusted Olympus DAO. Would you like the same thing at one cent per transaction? I think so. Yeah, but the big thing for me is how in the hell do, do they pay out a 9,000% APY and how is that sustainable? Well, let's get like, uh, for starters, um, when Olympus Dow launched, there was 100,000 APY back in April. And then as more people joined it, it the, the, API, the APY, which is the annual percentage yield, uh, which is the compounding. So as opposed to APR, which is the annual percentage return. These are kind of, these are very financial terms. Uh, you, anybody can look them up. They've been around for many decades, these terms. But basically, uh, yes, it dropped all the way. It dropped by 90% from 100,000 APY down to 7,000. Oh dear, what a, what a shame on Olympus Dow. Um, and, and so that's after, after you know, eight or nine, 10 months of operations. So that's the amazing, and it grew into the billions of, of liquidity and market um, cap, et cetera. So then Wonderland comes in and that APY after basically four months is still around the 80,000 APY. Um, so that means it has not dropped off significantly. In fact, if anything, Sometimes I see it go down to 75,000% APY and go back up above 80,000. Right now it's at 81. Last week it was at 79,000. So the, there are some levers, because I'm trying to answer your question. It's quite technical. There are some levers and dials that the team behind it can tweak. They can basically oscillate the APY uh, based upon the, the amount of funds that are flowing in. So they've, they've kind of done a computation in the back end that based upon how much liquidity is being poured into the platform, the APY goes up and down and also based upon the token price. But we still haven't addressed the elephant in the room, which is how on earth can this kind of return be possible? Because sure as on earth, it sounds like some kind of Ponzi scheme where more money's pouring in that's paying out the old. It does. 
Yeah. Barney, how, how does inflation affect Wonderland? I'm so curious. So this is that that's brilliant. That that's a really important question because that's actually the reason why these have been built. So when you listen to Zeus, who invented Olympus Dow, and he does do interviews, even though he doesn't show his face, unlike Danielle, who does do interviews and you see his face, like he's actually right out there. But Zeus is the character who came up with this new concept of platform owned liquidity. And he was concerned for a new kind of stable coin. He because he, he could see that hyperinflation was already in place and coming to the US, to the dollar. As they print trillions and trillions of more dollars and over 6%, um, you know, hyperinflation hitting the economy and CPI going up, what, what happens to all the stable coins in, in crypto that are pegged to the US dollar? So if the US dollar actually starts to tank, which some people think it could well do, what's that going to do to your Tether or USDC or PAX or any of these stable coins that we all love because they are stable, but actually, Will they remain stable? They, they will, but they'll drop in purchasing power. That's the key. But he had this idea. What if you had a new kind of stable coin that could actually increase in value in, in tandem to the drop in the economy and basically allowing a free floating? So here's the coolest, craziest bit that, that Wonderland and Olympus Dow and any of these Olympus Dow forks, remember they're copy and paste, and there's now many, many of them, but basically they are asset backed. They're crypto backed. So is there any crypto backing Bitcoin or as in any other asset at all or any other asset backing Ethereum? Zilch, nothing. Inside Ethereum is just nothing, not even air. There's just nothing there. It's just Ethereum is just sitting there by itself. Like it's just like floating with nothing. Whereas Olympus Dow and, um, and Wonderland, they've got roughly 20 to 25% backing by stable coins. That's pretty crazy. And so what is that even about? Well, why, and why is there the difference? Because people are betting on there being a future appreciation in value. No different to Tesla, Apple, Amazon, whatever stock you're looking at, the asset backing of Apple or, or any of these companies is way, way less. Like they might have like, you know, um, $500 billion of assets in their company, or like hard assets but they're trading at a premium above that because the market believes that they're going to that they'll, they'll appreciate in value. Now for the first time, we are seeing tokens using uh, digital tokens using the same model, which is which is really out there. It is. All right, so let's get back to my 9000 APY question. <laughs> yes. So, uh, which is basically by the way 10 times higher in Wonderland. 10 times about, you know, maybe 8 times higher. So, and by the way, now there are other versions of this same code, the exact same code. Yes, Mark, even you could just go in there and do copy and paste and make well, the new don't, <laughs> don't tempt me. Cause... Don't tempt you. Okay, no, <laughs> not gonna tempt anybody here. Just do it. Um, but, but basically, yeah, you copy this and suddenly you just spin up your own version. But so um, we're talking about Wonderland because it's, crazily enough, Wonderland is the child. It's the parent is Olympus Dow. Wonderland, and it's performing better. It has uh, got, more trading volume typically, uh, more participants. Uh, and I wonder why. Basically, they're doing a better job because it's part of a bigger ecosystem. Yes, Olympus Dow is also building out an ecosystem, but Danielle is very beyond smart, this guy. He's invented so many pieces. He's invented this thing, their own stable coin called magic internet money. If you, The terminology here is we're gonna start getting a bit, a bit out there. So magic internet money, is a new stable coin, like literally pegged to the dollar, but it's all algorithmically programmed. It's like actually a better version of DAI. So his team has invented a better version of DAI called Magic Internet Money. And then they've invented this whole other platform called Abracadabra. Yes, this is all, all real. And you can go in there and you can use your MIM, your Magic Internet Money inside Abracadabra, and then stake it and earn other yields. Meanwhile, over in Wonderland, their token's called Time. And so essentially people are, so he's built this whole ecosystem around Wonderland and people are buying the stable coin, um, MIM, and putting it inside. So basically the platform itself has got these assets. And when you go to the, the dashboard on Wonderland, if we just pull it up and you can look on the dashboard uh, over at wonderland.money, when you go in there and click on going to the app, you'll see that there's actually even a runway. I'm, I'm just gonna be blowing your mind here. There is a 404 day runway, which means that the treasury, they've built up a treasury, and the treasury balance in Wonderland is $720 million. 
Seven, that's almost a billion dollars for a four month old operation. Four months, $720 billion in the books in the treasury. And then you just divide that by the price of, of time, which is, that's the token for Wonderland. They call it time. And at the moment, it's actually crashed down only to, to 3,300 at the moment, which means if you divide the number of tokens, the price into the treasury, they can pay it out for 404 days. And the backing behind Wonderland is nigh on 1,700. So basically, it's got a 50% backing in stablecoin. That means that if the price drops down to $1,700, the platform will buy everything off everybody. So your, your maximum loss, what is your maximum loss in Bitcoin? Um, possibly 80% because it has dropped, but your maximum loss right now on, on Time Wonderland is 50%. Very, very interesting. So my big question um, is how is this possibly sustainable? You, you have to know that there's no way you can sustain a 90,000 percent APY. It's just, it, you run out of people, you run out of something. Uh, it can't just keep going. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, how long can you keep on printing a trillion dollars a month, Mark? <laughs> how, long, how, long is, how long is that economy sustainable? Please do tell. Well, in the current administration, indefinitely, it's, it seems like, but eventually it's going to crash. And, okay. and that's why Does that concern most people- you? Are you concerned that, around the largest economy in the world crashing? Could that have some impact on Europe? China, Australia, everywhere else in the world, let alone the Americans, could they have any impact? We, we are the bellwether. If, if we go down, everyone goes down. Oh, dear. Maybe there are <laughs> yeah. storms ahead. Oh, is right. <laughs> yeah. So, so I would actually be maybe a bit more concerned about that than some crazy out there DeFi platform that's offering 80,000% 80, 80, APY. Because what's really, one, one, one view, this is just a crazy view, is that this massive insane money printing is just from fiat from dollars is being taken into crypto and some of that there's an endless supply of dollars pouring into crypto and some of that is going into wonderland and these platforms so if there's an endless supply of fiat that can be transformed into time and wonderland how long and right now in this whole there's only i think maybe maximum 50 50 to 100,000 people in wonderland so if if 50 to 100,000 people can build a 720 million dollar treasury with a, um, a two, almost a two billion market cap from like not even 100,000 people. Are we anywhere even close to touching upon them? There's about three, maybe two or 300 million people in crypto. So we're looking at what, like 1% or something already who found out about it? Why isn't everyone in this then? It doesn't make any sense. Why isn't everyone doing it? These are great questions. I mean, every time I answer you like, well, hang on, okay, now why isn't everybody doing this? If it's that great and uh, so, What's odd is like, you know, I didn't find I didn't find out about this until well actually no, I saw it months ago, but like most people, when I first saw Olympus Dow and I saw that seven thousand percent, I thought it was a scam. I just discounted it. I did not even read or look into it. I was like, no. And then when I and then somebody for some reason it just kept on showing up and I was like, oh my goodness. And so when I looked at Olympus Dow in more detail, I was like, whoa, this looks like it could be legit. And then I looked at Wonderland, I was like, no. And then I looked into Danielle, the guy behind it, uh, this Italian guy. And I was like, no, he's, he's building something here. And then I looked into forums. And, and, and so, however, even amongst most of my, you know, uh, near and dear crypto friends, of which you are one, um, I, none of them had heard of it, weirdly enough. And, and if they had, they discounted it just like I had. They were like, no, nah. they'd heard about it maybe a couple of months ago for a moment and then pushed it aside. So I think that's one of the big blocks is that when somebody sees this, they think rug pull. They think, oh, it's just going to be some scam yeah. or it has to collapse in six months and I don't want to be left holding the bag. All of those natural thoughts. But then it's each month, like nine months with Olympus Dow, four months. And sure, this is not long. DeFi has only been going for two and a half years, the whole thing. So how long could this keep on going? But then I just asked you, how long is the US economy? I mean, I do think that the US economy can keep on going for at least a couple more years. It is of concern. It is of concern where things are going. And I think, and just lastly on this point, I do also believe that these kind of platforms are a major indicator that something is wrong. Something is wrong in the world. Because if you can make 80,000% APY and it starts to become normal, as, as you're making crazy sums of money, and I'm not saying who knows who's doing that, but like if you, if you can make these crazy, what on earth is going on in the world's economies? Like that should be the, the alarm bell is that even if you are making ridiculous amounts of money per day on these platforms, it should be actually alarming to you that something is up.
Yeah. Well, the something is up is we're at six percent inflation. That's you know who's, who knows who's measuring it and whether that's even accurate. I, I can't believe it, it won't go higher with this new uh, two and a half trillion dollar debt ceiling raise. And you know they're going to spend it. You know they are. Um, these people have no scruples about what they're doing. Uh, okay, so uh, Amanda, I don't know if you have anything uh, to ask about Wonderland. I have a few more questions. Not Wonderland, but what it, I, I, I'd like to hear your explanation on what is a basket of DeFi and how is a basket DeFi different than crypto we've seen? So there is like a basket in, inside this. You're applying liquidity, but mm -hmm. they're only letting you. So these platforms, they are self-selecting which how many tokens they're letting you be, be on that platform. So I think, yeah, like over on um, on on Wonderland, they're only allowing you to have two, MIM, which is the stable coin, and time itself. They did have some other ones. You could do AVAX before, but they've canceled that. And then if we look at uh, Olympus DAO, um, I, you can even just pull that up on the screen. You can you can check these yourself because it shows you how many they're, they're allowing on the platform. I think it's a few more, like five or six. But even so, obviously there's like, you know, a thousand tokens. And if they're only allowing like a handful of them, then the people who are running the platform, but they are beginning to open up. So the other funny thing is that these are, even though they're called a DAO, like Olympus DAO, they're not a true DAO. A DAO, no. um, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, which means that essentially the community is completely voting on every move. No, yeah. there is a little tiny committee of people running these platforms who are picking which tokens, which of the basket they can put in there. So it, it's very interesting. This is a, a brave new world in these kind of, in this DeFi 2.0, as they're calling this. Uh, and it, uh, some of these are actually beginning to include a swap, that, which means you can have a full swap inside the platform of platform owned liquidity. This is getting very interesting. Imagine a DEX that's now got this DeFi 2.0 of platform owned liquidity, where all the fees earning is going back to the native token that you are minting. So what you're doing is you're applying funding to their treasury so that you can mint their new token which on Wonderland is time. So you're literally getting the new time token as you give them money for the, what they call minting or bonding. And the same thing on Olympus DAO. Now then, I wasn't sure if you also meant this because guess what? You know, these, while they're on different chains, like Ethereum on Olympus DAO, uh, Avalanche for, for time in Wonderland, you know, you can connect these up. You could have little pipes. Imagine if you're earning on one and then you're siphoning it off into another one. You could just design your own little basket of DeFi apps all connected, all producing different APYs so that you're spreading your risk or whatever you want to do between each of them. And, and so it gets very fascinating to consider how each DeFi app producing these returns can connect and you can be earning potentially, uh, and I'm, there's no financial advice here. I'm, this is a highly, this is a very risky area is DeFi, but it's, it's instructional. Yeah, that's what you're, that's what you're doing. Uh, so how does one learn about how to do all this stuff? You have a class, I think, that my son took, but is there any anything that uh, people can do to learn? Well, there's an umpteen number of videos on YouTube. Like you, you literally just go into YouTube and just type in, uh, well, these are all called, these DeFi 2.0s, they're called rebasing. Why is it called rebasing? Because you rebase every eight hours. So every eight hours, and what is it? What's the deal? Why is this crazy APY? It's the compounding. So what you're going to see over on, and it's actually a great marketing spin. There's no truth in it. Let's be real about that. There's no, you're never going to get your 80,000 APY. I think everybody actually knows that, but it's a, it's a good hook. What you're going to get on Olympus Dow, for example, is five, at the moment right now, 5.3% for return for five days. So you're going to give them capital you're going to give them this capital. They're going to lock you in at that rate. And you're going to get the, the, the platform's token at a 5.3% discount. That's basically how it works. You're getting a discount on the platform's own token. You've given them stable coins or, or whatever. And they are building up their treasury. You're getting the native token as a discount. And, and, and then basically you're going to get that dripped over to you at about 20% a day. 20% of the allocation. So you get it dripped over to you. And then if you're smart, or some people, they may want to stake that because you've got the bonding minting and then you can stake it for the extra return. So you can actually start getting this extra return. And, and so that's how they actually, they work and all of them work in that same fashion where people are giving them, giving them um, building up the treasury with their tokens and getting the platforms token. And the, when you hold that platforms token, let's say time on Wonderland, you know, you're earning more of them. So it's unlike 
unlike you know any other token like Ethereum, Bitcoin, you know, if you buy 10 Ethereum, which is a lot, yeah, you buy 10, it's never going to be 11. It's never going to be nine Ethereum. It's never going to be 15 Ethereum. It's just going to sit there. You go back in a year's time, it's only 10 Ethereum. You don't touch your Ethereum, it just sits there, only 10. If you do this Wonderland or Time thing, or Olympus, you do your 10 and you leave it for a year, it's compounded. Um, now, now, basically, the the kind of the elephant in the room is that they're saying you're going to get this many thousands of percent APY. That's only if everything can, continues for a whole year. It has to be for 12 months. And yes, Olympus Dow has actually been running for almost 12 months. But what you're guaranteeing on the platform is the is the extra you're getting over the five days at that rate. But what does that mean about the price? There's many variables here. This is what people, so there's the price of you getting of the token and we've seen them drop as we've seen the whole market drop in the last week. So it's not actually a, uh, a true hedge. However, they do have this asset backing that could give some people maybe some modicum of uh, confidence. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Um... All right. Well, we're going to wrap some things up. Uh, Amanda, do you have any last questions for Barnaby on either Wonderland or just DeFi in general? No, this has been one of my favorite episodes to date, though, Barnaby. You're, you almost ask yourself the questions as you're going. <laughs> I, I really <laughs> love it. <laughs> well, I, I've already asked him half of these questions already. Yeah. And he's probably tired of explaining it. So he's like, I'll, I'll just come on and uh, do a show with you guys. So I don't have to explain it. For 50 <laughs> times. I think that's what's going on. Well, I do look. I totally understand why this is confusing and, and out there. And you know, it's it's risky, but but basically, crypto is risky. I think we just talked about how maybe the whole economy, the normal U.S. economy, could also be <laughs> risky, maybe. Um, and maybe. then, it's yeah, certainty. there you go. And so, and then we're looking at this DeFi. DeFi itself, DeFi 1.0, that was risky, and now we've got this new version. And so, it's really upon each person to consider risk. Because I will say this: wherever you're holding your capital, you're making a bet. If you've just got your money in the bank. You're betting on that bank and you're betting on the US dollar. Maybe you're not thinking of that because now currencies, different currencies are putting their hand up and saying, maybe you want to come over here. And so normal in normal land, normal, not Wonderland, normal land, you're, you're thinking that you've just got the US dollar and the US dollar is the, the safe place to be. And now you're like, wow, I could actually, um, if I don't believe in the US dollar, if I don't, as a thesis, I think the US, if I think the US dollar is going to crash, maybe I should put it somewhere else. What are my other options? Well, yeah, sure, there's real estate, there's business, but then there's also Bitcoin. Then there's Ethereum. And then you start looking at this stuff, at this DeFi 2.0, and you go, what actually happens? And then everybody's got their risk amount. Like if somebody's got like, and no financial advice here, I'm just giving some, if somebody says, well, what if I just took $100? Cool. But what if somebody else, that their $100 was actually $1,000, et cetera. And the thing is, all I can say is these opportunities, um, if they are that, are here for the taking and they're not going away. If anything, they're sprouting up more and more. As more people realize the potential of crypto, as they realize the potential of DeFi, new iterations, completely new inventions. This is basically the reinventing of money itself. Money itself has merged with tech. This is an out there concept and it's merged with tech and people are programming money for insane returns. And most people are just going to stand on the, on the sidelines watching, going, what is going on? And some crazy don't understand it. might want to jump in. What was that? Well, they, they don't understand it because we call it things like wonderland in time. You're investing in time. I mean, the euphemisms are uh, out of this world. And so people are like, I don't even know what language are you guys speaking? This sounds like, uh, you know, oompha loompha land. And Let so sure. that's part of the problem. Let me throw a few more in there because basically I'm going to just bamboozle people. Some of this terminology is hilarious. Like what about the apes? Have you, what, aping in. That's what we call this. You ape in because you're a degen. The degens are in charge. They're the apes leaping from APY to APY. You see, we're just laughing now. It just sounds absurd. But ever since the GameStop fiasco happened, that's when they started calling themselves degens, which stands for degenerate. And they are the apes. <laughs> You've got the degenerates who are the chest beating apes and apes, you know, then they go back to Planet of the Apes. Apes stand together stronger. So you stand together stronger. So if the apes move in the herd, they can jump in and provide liquidity. And then they start doing this 3-3 thing that you would see on all of these platforms. That's the prisoner's dilemma, where if you stand together in the little chart, you'll make the platform work and the apes move together and they do their 3-3 three because three they're all degens. Did you understand any of that? Yes, I, I do. But what happens if you're not 
you know, jumping with the apes, you're left holding the bag? Could be. So you might want to find out what the degenerates are up to because they're always <laughs> looking for the next APY. I got no other, nothing else to say on that. It's too weird. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. And with that, we'll end on that note. I do want to ask you one question. Um, this will be live in early 2022. What is the price of Bitcoin in December 2022? Oh, in 12 months from now, because right today, it's just slightly under 47,000. 46, in this moment, it's moving up and down a lot today. Yes. Uh, so you're asking me, well, I'm, I'm actually still, I can't help it. I'm bullish. I'm bullish on crypto. And I'm not bullish on the US dollar. This is my personal opinion. Don't don't follow my advice because I'm I've drunk the Kool Aid on crypto. And so that given that um, I also believe my just my personal opinion that the markets are manipulated. I just that's my personal view. And so I think that whatever kind of powers that be, they're able to move the markets. And, and certainly the whales can have a massive impact. But I think that um, I think that okay. I'm going to say this: if Bitcoin does not at the end of this year, in two weeks' time. It has to rise above 57, 58,000. If it does not do that, and if it drops, and it, so long as we're above 42, Bitcoin right now is in a danger zone between 42,000 and 58. That's a big range. That's seventeen thousand dollars. If it, it can keep on moving between that for the coming few months, if it drops below 42, oh dear, I think we could. I think we have a 50% crash it, imminently, anytime. But if we pop above. 55, 58,000, yeah, it's going to be blue sky heading back up above. But in 12 months' time, um, yeah, I'd be probably saying that I think that the next year could be a, a crazy ride up and down. And uh, I'm thinking, I don't believe it'll be like last time where it'll have crashed back down to at the end of next year, 10,000. I don't, I do not believe that. I'm, I'm saying it'll be above 250. 250. All right. I, above Good. that. That's my mean 12 yeah. months. I mean, it moved really fast. From 13, 14 months ago to now, it's it's quadruple. Well, I don't think it quite quadruple, but it tripled. I mean, that's, Actually, that's, that's that, amazing. Uh, one little caveat. Like, I do believe it's going to get to 250 in the next year. Whether it can maintain that, actually, I just that's my little caveat. Like, I think it's yeah. going to do that in the next 12 months, and uh, let's see where it goes. Because um, my, my view is that in this in this decade, we're gonna we've got a currency war going on, and these DeFi platforms are part of that. Let, let's face it, smarter money programmable money, way more innovative, way better than uh, just dumb fiat. Uh, it really is. It's going to move that direction. Now, what happens with that? Does Do governments take it over or do the DGENs rule the day? I don't know, but it's definitely moving that direction, 100%. All right. Thanks, Barnaby. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you, Thanks, everyone.